Okay, IBAISL2. Uh, today we're going to talk about the chi-squared test of independence. So the first thing I want to say about this is this is not an X. Uh, this is pronounced chi. Uh, it's spelled chi, but it's not chi. It's not the chi squared. It's not the X squared. It's the chi squared. Uh, before we talk about chi squared, which is just one type of hypothesis test, um, let's talk about hypothesis testing in general. So if you're hypothesis testing, there's always a null and an alternative hypothesis. The uh, null hypothesis from here on out, we're gonna call H sub zero, and then the alternative is gonna be H sub one. Um, the null hypothesis is an initial hypothesis. It can mean a lot of different things, uh, you know, uh, for different types of tests. Uh, but then the alternative to the null is called the H sub one, the alternative hypothesis. Um, it's when you're rejecting the null hypothesis. It's when you're accepting the alternative. And we're going to get into examples of what I mean by all this. I just want you guys to know some of the notation. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's say um, if you're interested in a population of uh, whether or not a population is 20 centimeters or more, you could be measuring like tree saplings or whatever, but let's state the null and the alternative hypothesis. Uh, the null hypothesis for this would be that um, the population is 20 centimeters, the mean. Um, so you would say that X bar is equal to 20 in this case. Um, the alternative would be that they're not 20. It would be that uh, X bar is greater than 20 because it said or more. So there the uh, initial hypothesis is that a population is 20 centimeters and the alternative hypothesis is that they're over 20 centimeters. Now, a chi-squared test of independence. Once again, it's not pronounced chi, it's chi. Uh, it shows whether two data sets are independent of each other. So this is a test of independence. It tests whether two parameters are independent or not. Um, in this course, chi-squared will only be tested at 1%, 5%, or 10% significance levels. I'll get more into significance levels as we go. There's just a lot of sort of like groundwork before you get actually get into a chi-squared problem. So let's say you asked uh, a bunch of men and women, um, how, you know, whether or not they prefer like tennis or squash or badminton, uh, which sport, which racket sport they like to play. And, uh, you know, you asked males and females, and this was your response here. Um, if you're going to run a chi-squared test on this data, you're basically trying to figure out if gender and sport preference are independent of each other or not. So here, the initial, uh, or the null hypothesis would be gender and sport choice are independent of each other. I'm just going to say independent because I'm running out of room. The alternative hypothesis would be that they're not independent. So we could say gender and sport choice are dependent on each other. That would mean that, um, you know, it, it, whether or not you're male or female does influence your choice about whether or not you're um, going to play badminton or squash or tennis. To be able to calculate chi-squared, uh, we're going to need degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is a pretty easy formula. It's just um, the number of rows in your table minus one uh, times the number of columns in your table minus one. The actual way to calculate chi-squared is with this formula right here. You're going to add together, that's what the sigma is, all the pho minus phi squared divided by phi's. Now, what are pho and phi's? Pho is all of the observed values. It's like your initial data. And then uh, phi is all the expected values. And I'll teach you guys how to find expected values as well. <coughs> if chi-squared is larger than a critical value, then you reject the null hypothesis and say that you accept the alternative hypothesis. 
If your chi-squared number is smaller than a critical value, and you might look at that and be like, what does he mean by a critical value? Once again, I'll show you how we're gonna find critical values and use them. But if your chi-squared is smaller than a critical value, uh, then you accept the null hypothesis, which would mean that uh, the two are independent of each other. So alternative is that they're dependent. Um, null hypothesis is that they're independent of each other. So the null hypothesis is independent. And uh, rejecting the null hypothesis would mean that they're dependent. <laughs> okay, um, I guess I should go back here and talk for a second that um, there is a way to find chi-squared on your calculator. I'm going to post a video for that. And with all the homeworks and stuff like that, you guys don't really need to work them out by hand. You can try one for fun if you like. But really, um, this... I'm gonna walk you guys how to do it, walk you guys through how to do it by hand because if you're gonna write an IA in this course, um, chi-squared needs to be in the IA. So this is an IA requirement. And it needs to be done by hand. You need to show the workings of it, not just punch it into a calculator. So I'm gonna walk us all through how to do this problem by hand. But realize that I also am going to show you how to do it by calculator. So from here on out, you can, you can do calculator. Okay, um, the first thing we're going to look at is this problem is about seatbelt usage versus your gender. So if I was to state the null and alternative hypothesis, the null would be gender and seatbelt usage are independent of each other. The alternative, of course, would be that they're not independent. That is to say that they are dependent. So this is kind of how you should start every chi-squared problem, is state what the null and the alternative hypothesis are. <coughs> now, <coughs> gosh, excuse me. Um, if we look at this data, this is like a bunch of people got asked whether or not they use seatbelts and then asked what their, uh, what, which uh, gender they identify as. Um, the first step towards finding an expected frequency table, which we're gonna fill out right here, is you gotta take the original frequency table and add together all the columns and rows. So 50 plus 25 is 75. If I add together 40 and 45, that gives me 85. And then here, 50 and 40 is 90. And then adding together the column is 70. Now you do actually put a number here as well because uh, this is gonna be the total N, the number of people that were in the survey. Uh, you can do this by adding together these two columns or adding together these two columns. They should both equal 160. I did my math right. Yeah. Now, to be able to find this square, the expected number of females who use seatbelts, what you do is like, if you're gonna find this square right here, you look at the total to the right and you look at the total directly underneath it. You multiply those numbers together so we do 90 times 75, but then divide that by the total number that, of people that were in the survey. So if you do 90 times 75 and divide by 160, that's 42.1875. So I'm gonna say 42.19. So this is 42.19. Maybe I should put it someplace else. Uh, we're really gonna get into the weeds here. Okay. Shrink this bad boy. What did I say? 42.19. So that is the expected number of females that would use a seatbelt. Uh, it compares to the original 50. 50 was actually in the survey, but in terms of what should be expected, it should be 42.19. 
Um, to find this spot right here, you're going to take 75 and the 70 and multiply them together. So you always take, like if you're looking for this spot, you take what's directly below it and directly to the right, the totals, and you multiply them and then divide by 160. 70, 75, 160. So 70 times 75 divided by 160 is 32.81. If you do the same process of like, you know, 85 times 90 divided by 160, that will give you this square. Um, and you round to two decimal places, you get 47.81. And if you do the same process on the last one where you multiply 85 and 70 together and then divide by 160, you should get uh, 37.19. Um, a quick way to see if you did these right is to add up the totals. So if I add up directly across this way, um, 47.81 plus 37.19 is 85 total. If I go back over here, that matches the 85 in the original contingency table, frequency table. Okay, so this, these are expected numbers, this whole table right here. Those are the fees. This is FE, and then all of these are FO. So observed frequencies and expected frequencies. If I look down here, all of my observed frequencies are gonna go in this column. And then all of my expected frequencies are gonna go in this column. So, um, you can put them in any order you want, but you need to make sure that they match up with their expected frequencies. So I'm gonna go 50, 25, 40, 45. Notice that I went top right, left to top right, then bottom left, then bottom right. So if I do that again with the expected frequencies, I need to start with top left, which is 42.19, then top right, which is 32.81, then bottom left, which is 47.81, and then bottom right, which is 37.19. So each expected frequency matches up with its observed frequency. Now, um, the reason that I scaffold this like top part like this is that I'm building up to the chi-squared equation. If you go back to the chi-squared equation, this is what we need to add together. Pho minus phi squared divided by phi. So that's the goal, to get pho minus phi squared divided by, oh, that should be phi on the bottom, my bad. So this table just kind of helps you take it step by step. First you subtract pho and phi, then you square them, then you divide by phi. So 50 minus 42.19 is 7.81. Then if you subtract the next two, you get negative 7.81. Then you get negative 7.81 again, and then 7.81 when you subtract those. Now, if you square those numbers, you get 61.04, 61.04, 61.04, and 61.04. Then you take each of those and divide them by their respective phi. So each of these numbers are going to get divided by this number to give you this one right here. I guess I can write the first one out that it's like... 61.04 divided by 42.19, which is 1.45. So if you do that same process, take every pho minus phi squared and divide by phi, uh, on the next one you should get 1.86, and then 1.27, then 1.64, now, this entire column, you're going to need to add together because if you add it all up to get a total, that is your chi-squared number, which is 6.22. 
So that 6.22 is the chi-squared calc. Remember that chi-squared is sigma pho minus phi squared divided by phi. So that's what we did. We found all the pho minus phi squareds in this column and then added them all together, which is what a sigma means. You're adding them all together. So the chi-squared is 6.22. Then you're to decide whether or not um, seatbelt and gender are independent or dependent of each other. You need to compare that chi-squared with a critical value. So um, if I scroll back up here, this area says that uh, if chi-squared is larger than the critical value, then you reject the null and uh, say that they're dependent on each other. But if it's smaller than a critical value, you accept the null and say that they're independent of each other. The critical value comes from this, pay this uh, chart. This chart can be found on Google Image Search. There's lots of bigger ones and stuff like that. Um, in this course, you will only be expected to test at a 10% confidence, a 5% confidence, or 1% confidence. So uh, we have to compare our chi-squared with one of these numbers, but it's like, which number do we use? Well, it depends on the size of your table, uh, your original table. So if I go back to the OG data, this table is two by two. My colors here. Two by two table, two rows and two columns. To find degrees of freedom, which I think we wrote down right here, it's rows minus one times columns minus one. So we'll say degrees of freedom is rows minus one times columns minus one, but it was a two by two table. So degrees of freedom in this case is two minus one times two minus one, which equals one degree of freedom. So you will see your degrees of freedom here in this column. So I find one degree of freedom and then we have to test it at a certain confidence, either 10%, 5% or 1%. In general, if it doesn't tell you, the scientific standard is 5%. Um, yeah, this problem didn't say, so we're just going to use 5%. So if I find one degree of freedom under 5% confidence, this is my critical value, 3.84. So my chi-squared, you have to compare your chi-squared with your critical. Our chi-squared was 6.22, and the critical is 3.84. Because chi-squared is larger, remember back up here, it said if chi-squared is larger than a critical value, you reject the null hypothesis. So this means we reject the null. Whoa, 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 calm down. This also means that we accept the alternative, which the alternative hypothesis with the seatbelt problem was gender and seatbelt use are dependent on each other. Uh oh. Final answer, did all that work just to say, yeah, the two uh, actually do influence each other. Your, your gender influences your seatbelt choice, which is very weird. Notice we're not saying like, guys use seatbelts more often or less often. We're just saying as one changes, the other one will change. Okay, that's all I have for today. I, of course, will also post that video about how to find the chi-squared uh, uh, statistics